listen, listen, listen. You have this new covenant. Don't hold back. You're not thinking big enough. Let's get the job done. Think bigger. Let the Holy Spirit give you his wisdom. No, no, think bigger. The promises are still yours. Let's enjoy the kingdom. No, no, think bigger and don't hold back. I love that phrase, don't hold back. Most people's lives are already maxed out. Now think bigger. Let's not leave any territory untaken. A lot is happening. I've got a lot to cover with you today. And so we're gonna dive right into it and uh, we're gonna have a good time. So where do you wanna go? Write that down on your notes. Where do you wanna go? There has to be an answer to it. There is an answer to it actually. And you're probably already living in that answer, but I'm asking you today, where, where do you wanna go? Now, when I grew up, I grew up right here in New Albany. We didn't go very far. We didn't, uh, we didn't travel. Money was tight, my family. And I can still remember, um, having a, my parents had a, one of the, as a child, first grader, my parents had this big, big fight. Um, I lived in, uh, in Columbus, Clintonville at that time. And I walked to school in first grade. Now, you know, think of it today. It's probably not, people wouldn't think of doing that, but we all walked to school back there in first grade and it was winter and mom wanted to buy me a coat. And I don't know if anyone remembers this brand. I'm not sure, but there was this big fight. Mom won. She wasn't going to send her first grader down the street without a good coat in the winter time, you know. But she bought this, uh, if anyone remembers this, a brown corduroy Mighty Mac was the name of the coat with the hood. Mighty Mac coat. I, for, I still remember this day that I was so proud of that coat. Man, I loved that coat, right? My dad, bless his heart, you know, if we ever were going to do something frivolous in his mind, frivolous, He'd always say, well, someday you'll grow up. You got responsibilities. So, you know, we didn't do much. We didn't, we didn't have many dreams because if you have that kind of comment, every time you have a thought, you learn real quick not even to bother have the thought, right? So I can't remember traveling too much uh, at all, really. The only trip I can remember ever taking growing up was out of the blue. My dad decided to take me and my brother to Canada fishing. We had a big pond at our house. My dad never fished. I, I guess he just took us boys, but it was a great trip. I loved it. But that's the only trip that I ever remember uh, really taking. We didn't travel. We'd go to Columbus to shop some, but didn't get out. Didn't really, I, I didn't know I didn't get out. You ever know, you know, I didn't know I was missing something, you know? But uh, I was 14 and my friend and I decided to save our money and buy a Schwinn 10 speed. And these were the, that was the bike to have back then. And uh, one that had that speedometer on it, you know, you could buy this accessory, this speedometer. We were really, really thrilled about these bikes. We'd ride them up and down our street. And one day we thought we'd take a trip. Now to us, we didn't know what a trip was. We just wanted to get out of the ordinary street there. We knew if we went down the street and turned left, we'd go to the school, which we did. We'd ride our bikes to school some. If we went right, the county line was right there. We had no idea what was on the other side of the county line. <laughs> so we were gonna take a trip. We were gonna cross, cross that county line and take a big bicycle trip, right? So we headed down there and rode and finally came to a little town, had a store there and it was hot day. We were thirsty, so we went in and began to tell the lady about our big bicycle trip that we were on. So we asked the, the lady about the name of the town and I'd never heard of it. And I said, well, how far back is that intersection we came from? She said, five miles. We thought, five miles? We thought we'd ridden about 50. <laughs> we are so discouraged, we just went, rode back home. <laughs> so, but you know, it's interesting. I didn't even know the name of a town five miles down my street. I mean, I didn't even know the towns around us. We lived in this little bubble. My parents just didn't go anywhere. My grandpa died when I was 13, my dad's dad. And going down in his basement, cleaning out some things, I found a box of this old rusted up gun. And my dad said I could have it. I'm sure he thought it was just a bunch of junk, but he didn't know how resourceful I was when it came to trying to think, make this thing work. And I worked on that thing and I got it working. And I can remember the day I walked out there carrying that gun to my dad and said, dad, look, I got it to work. Will you shoot it? 
I, I was shocked. My dad said, yeah, I'll shoot it. And he went out and shot at 12 gauge. It was a 1919 German Mauser action, bolt action, an old gun. And he shot that thing and he said, you can have it. And uh, we grew up on my dad's, far, uh, my grandma's um, farm. We built a house. My dad built a house there. And so I asked him if I could hunt. And he said, yes, I was surprised. Anyway, I was hooked. Man, I loved being out in the woods. I loved hunting with that old shotgun. And I thought it was the best thing. It was just amazing, right? And so I, I signed up for the subscriptions to all and every outdoor book I could get my hands on. I'd go to the library. I had outdoor life, sports afield, uh, fur fishing game. Um, I, what's all of them? I don't know. They're, they're endless, right? Herder's catalog, which was uh, the catalog like Cabela's was back then. I would sit in study, study hall and I'd study that catalog. And I read I had stacks of these magazines that high. I had stacks of them all through junior high, all through high school and college. I, set, I kept every one of them. And I had stacks. I'd read those things two or three times through, man. And the amazing thing was I, I still, I, well, I understand what happened, but I never, not once, had the thought to do what I saw in those magazines. Even though I loved hunting, I never had the idea to even go and do that. Not once, not once. See, I had been trained, I, I say it this way, I had been trained to say no so well. I had been trained to think no before I even said no. You understand what I'm saying? I was, I was a professional trained no because that's what my dad said. No, you know, can you, no, 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 right? So I had my training uh, in no, and I have to be admit in my life, that was probably the greatest hindrance that I've had to overcome is that no training. And I imagine some of you, if not many of you here today have had the same training. No, I can't do that. Can't do that. In fact, most of us say no before we even calculate if something's possible because we're so accustomed to thinking our little box, you know, we can't, no, we can't do that. Drenda has to correct me, even to this day, she'll have to correct me because I'll, I'll revert back to that before I even calculate what is there. Come on, how many do that? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, you can't go warp speed that way. I'm serious, and this is what this morning session is about. You'll never go there. You'll never even think how to get there. You'll never even think to ask how to get there because you have been trained to say no over and over and over again, right? The Lord corrected me raising our kids because when we were very tight in finances early on, I'd say, no, kids would say, can we hit no? Even if they looked at me, I would say no. Because <laughs> I knew what was coming. <laughs> and the Lord had to stop me one day. He goes, why are you saying that? He said, why don't you say yes? And so I began to say yes. I had to start training myself to say yes. So basically we live, most people live in self-inflicted prison walls of mediocrity. Hmm. Yeah, it's true. But this is the year to break out of that because you'll never get there without changing your whole perspective.